Shirley. <clears throat> Our next two guests are familiar to you from Seattle. They happen to live part of the time in Seattle and some of the time in Honolulu. They are were with formerly with KGR, and now would you please welcome Lan Roberts and Pat O'Day. Thank you, all these round trips, I understand. Well, yeah, Land, Land never leaves. Yes. He just stays you, what, here. 92 round trips? 92 times I've made the trip in the last four years. You can't make up your mind where you want to be. I never know. It's <laughs> one, I'm a constant case of jet lag. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, it was, uh, I think I was to some extent responsible for Pat coming over here. I, I called him one night in January back in 1976, I believe. And I said, Pat, I think uh, it was a radio station I was working for at the time. I said, I think... Uh, I think you might be able to buy a radio station here. He says, okay. So a week later, I move, uh, go back to Seattle to sell my airplane, and I get a call from him about 3.30 in the morning. He says, what are you doing over there? I just bought the radio station. So from there, it sort of, uh, sort of developed. Radio yeah, station's KORL here. Yeah, yeah, I want to say thanks a lot, too, because the dumb Holly from Seattle nearly lost his Akoli over here before. <laughs> <laughs> before we turned it around. So it's KYYX in, in uh, Seattle. Uh, are, you, are you still affiliated with KJR? Uh, no. Uh, after many happy years there, uh -huh. I went on my own and uh, purchased Coral here. And uh, then we put KYYX on the air two years ago. So it's and KOR. I understand this is a pretty tough radio market. 21 radio stations, is that right? 29. 29. 29 radio stations with a population about a third the size of the Seattle Tacoma Everett area. It's uh -huh. very competitive. Yeah. We've been very fortunate. The station when we bought it was almost non-existent, mm -hmm. and it's come forward to be one of the leading stations here. Well, we're so delighted to have you. And you're one thanks of to Lan and a great crew here to do a good job. You know, when Don Ho is on, there's something I think that should be said about Don. And uh, that is not only does he, of course, create millions and millions of dollars in tourism, which is important for the economy here, but I think few realize how Don really pays his dues in this community. He's so active in Variety Club, and... Uh, of course, you have been, too. Well, yes. <laughs> true, but Don has got a heart of gold, and uh, my goodness, the contribution he makes here to every charity. You can always call on him. He's always there. Here's a coincidence. Don, I promoted Don's concert in the Opera House in Seattle in 1967, and then in the arena and several other shows around. Don and I became good friends, and now we're neighbors. Uh, Don mm -hmm. and I live in that building right there. He lives on the top floor, and I live just uh, well, two floors great below Great people it. flock together, let's put yes. it that way. <laughs> but Don is a charming guy, and his contribution to this town is just awesome. Well, listen, thank you for helping us to get him on the show. Oh, you're welcome. Responsible. One of, if you were uh, listening to Seattle radio all through the 60s and the early part of the 70s, one of the most popular personalities, of course, was Lan Roberts. And you remember that Lan has this... Uh, it's real joy of looking into the UFO phenomenon. Now, you tried to arrange for a kind of a meeting at one time for a UFO flyby, and which and was out at Issaquah at the time. Issaquah, right? and uh, we did actually see something. Pat differs with me on that. We always get into an argument about the uh, Issaquah <laughs> flying saucer. How about out here? Have you had a chance to to spot any kind of uh, UFOs? We tried to several times, but it just turned out to be landing lights on a 747 coming in from <laughs> north. <laughs> Cliff, land is a UFO. <laughs> For everyone in Seattle, he's still doing his shticks here. It's uh, unbelievable. He uh, has the international doggy news on now. Oh, 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 he really? announced that the flea circus is coming to town <laughs> on the doggy news with Evil Kaflee, who's going to jump <laughs> over 29 Dalmatians. That's, that's the kind of thing that the people of Hawaii uh, have to put up with now. He has changed uh, a bit. I was looking through one of my favorite magazines, the National Enquirer, one afternoon, and I saw <laughs> I saw an article about a lady from uh, Lake Stevens, Washington. You might remember some of the people in the audience uh, who had the four-legged duck. That's right. Well, uh -huh. I called her on the telephone, did an interview with her, and she was such a charming person. I said, well, uh, Viola, how would you like to bring your duck over here to Hawaii for a big Hawaiian vacation? We'll take care of all the expenses. She said she'd love to. So uh, we brought her over here had her at three different shopping centers. 8,000 people showed up to see the four-legged duck. Uh, we took her out to the Polynesian Cultural Center and had a great time. And then about, this was in September and January of the next year, which was last year, I get a call one morning. She says, Lan, the duck's dead. Right. And I said, uh, what happened? She says it gave birth to a three-yolk egg in the bathtub and it just expired. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was quite a sight. We had uh, two television stations here covering the right. Hey, this is serious, duck. folks, really. I mean, it was a... <laughs> it was hard to do the interview there with which is telling about the duck laying a three-yolk egg and saying it was dead, you know, but I tried to, to keep my cool. You should have seen the people at the airport. Here is a duck on the floor. All three television stations are there. There's Aloha dancers, and the duck is biting the microphone. And, and Lan is standing there acting like a 
show you meet a duck at the airport every day. <laughs> now, someone yesterday uh, told me that, you know, if you're going to describe Hawaii, you could describe it as being, of getting into a velvet rut. That's very true. Now, very true. How, and you say it's true. Why do you think that? It's just it's, because uh, it's so easy, life is so pleasant it's here. Another it's another pace so of life. Uh, when I switch back and forth from Seattle, I'll be in Seattle a week and come over here. And it is hard to shift gears because Seattle moves with a quick pace. Mm -hmm. And over here, migraines and rain. There's, an, there's <laughs> an expression here that if you, uh, and this has to do with dealing with the local people who are, are wonderful people, but you deal differently. If your car is on fire, and you run down the street to the gas station, you do not run in and say, give me the extinguisher, quick, my car's on fire. No, you go in and you say, how's it, bra? How's the family? <laughs> huh? Everything going good? I uh, say, bra, up the street a couple blocks to my car on fire. Uh, you suppose maybe I could borrow your fire? Then you'll get the fire extinguisher. <laughs> run in and say, give me the fire extinguisher, quick, you won't get it, you won't be able to find it. Oh, and uh, people want you to slow down to their pace. And of course, a, there's a disease, too, that we refer to over here in the islands as Polynesian paralysis. Right. Mm. Uh, and I'm uh, sure you pray. Yeah, it, it takes about three or four days. You see, so so many people coming over here, and I see a lot of people from Seattle, uh, they come over here to visit the islands, and it takes about three or four days to unwind. Mm -hmm. That's true. Now with me, it took me six months to unwind mm -hmm. when I first came over here, a bad case of Polynesian paralysis. You don't want to do anything except just hang out and relax, which is one of my favorite hobbies over in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Land got married this year. Oh, Land got married. Land was doing a promotion for the station. He was driving a moped, and uh, in a moped race, he hit a chuck hole and uh, broke seven ribs in his shoulder and a fractured skull. He was in the hospital, and the doctor got him on the outside of about 30 percadans, and his girlfriend came in and proposed to him. And uh, before Land knew what happened, she hobbled him up to the altar, and Land was married. That's, you know, that's a true story. I hope it doesn't happen that way with too many other people over here in Hawaii. <laughs> Didn't your radio program one time end up in Fiji? Oh, that's so where you're we're having, taping, yes. You ship your programs yes. back to the mainland like For a while, like when uh, KYYX first uh, was on the air, I was taping a show here for Seattle, and then for about two, three days, it wasn't showing up. In other words, I'd tape it one day and ship it to Seattle, uh, and then the three shows for, I think, the next week wound up in Fiji. Here's the officials down in Fiji with these three radio shows they didn't want to do with. They so. loved Lan in Fiji. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, this is an interesting experiment, but we do this many times. The local people here, music is so important, and you feel it when you hear that music is uh, such a part of the heritage of the islands, that you could pick anyone, anywhere, out of a group of local people, and you'll find a beautiful singer who can compose. You want to see an experiment right now? Sure. Do we have anyone local? We have a local gentleman over here. Uh, uh, what, what's your name? Come on up. Come on. Come on up on the stage. There's a microphone there. Does, does that microphone work? I think, I think it's probably on. What's your name? Yeah. Oh, Willie. Come on up, Willie. Would you like a guitar or anything? Do you play a guitar? Yeah. Is there a guitar? The beach and There's I a guitar, guitar over there. Yeah. See, go run and grab the guitar. Uh. Now, Willie, I would like for you, this, sh this show is on in Seattle, and like for you to sing a song to the people in Seattle. Have you ever been to Seattle before? Um, um, no. Never no. been to Seattle? No. I'll, I'll whisper something about is, Seattle, and then you do a song. It's not a coolie, but <laughs> <laughs> That's just down okay. the block, by the way. All right. And just, um, Do you want us to sing along with you? Okay, wait a minute. Um, are you guys, are you guys all know Burley Shells? Eh? We know Burley <laughs> Shell. I can't sing. Um, okay, let's sing this to the tune of Burley uh, Shells. Okay. okay. Do you want us to sing along with you? Yeah. Why don't we? Great. Right. Uh, Ryan Roberts, sure. right? Yeah. How's it, bro? Hey, how you I listen to you, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> um, Okay, okay. Well, what I want you guys to do is just maybe repeat whatever I sing. All right. Okay. That could be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Seattle. Eh? Okay. Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier. Puget Sound. Puget, Puget Sound. Uh, West Seattle Bridge. West Seattle Bridge. All fall down. All fall down. Airports fogged in. Airports fogged in. Supersonics number one. <laughs> but then again, I like the LA Rams. <laughs> it's gonna be a hit. Terrific. Do you have another song? Uh, what are you gonna do now? I'm gonna beach right now. I'm gonna go beach. Willie, thank, thank you. Willie, thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you for joining us. And also thanks to Land Roberts and Cat O'Day for joining us on Seattle today from Honolulu. Thank you. We're gonna tell you the truth.